Thank you very, very much for coming and braving the heat um, uh, in this tent. Um, I'm just a Times columnist, doesn't matter who I am, but the chap on my right who I've known for a ridiculously long time, and this really is a kind of crumbly convention up here on the, uh, on the stage, but full of intellectual vigour, um, uh, is Peter Mandelson, who, how many jobs did you do in government in the end? I mean, how many cabinet Almost the same number as I lost. <laughs> well, it must be, that's by definition, yeah. But. You know, I you know, navigated my way through appointments and defenestrations over a period of 13 years. You were business secretary? No, first of all, I was the Prime Minister's Minister in the Minister Without Portfolio in the Cabinet Office. Oh, yeah. Which I absolutely hated. Because you didn't have a portfolio? Well, because I didn't have a portfolio and because I had to be sort of stuck like a sort of glue to T. Blair and I wanted to go off and do my own thing. Then I became Secretary of State for Trade and Industry, um, left. Uh, then I came back as no Secretary of State for Northern Ireland, left. Then I went to Europe as Trade Commissioner and then was summoned back literally at a day's notice by Gordon Brown when the global financial crisis struck. So, you did a lot of jobs in government, yeah. and you'd been in politics for a long time before that. You had been a Lambeth councillor back in the days of... And now, unless you are over 50, you will not know this, Red Ted Knight. Yes, Red Ted Knight was the leader of Lambeth Council uh, when I was elected, and when I was elected to it, he said, well, at least we've got some of my own people elected at the same time. Pity about you. <laughs> we were both members of the Labour Party, but you wouldn't have thought so. Yeah, Red Ted was called Red Ted by his friends as well as by his enemies. So it's, uh, uh, and he was actually a Trotskyist, wasn't he? He was a Trotskyist, uh, paid for by Gaddafi, if I remember, who was yeah, backing yeah. some Trotskyite faction at the time. And they had a newspaper that was called Labour uh, Herald, and they were sort of pretty close-knit into the whole... Uh, Ken Livingstone sort of Trotskyist brigade during the uh, 19, late 70s, 80s. Now the, the reason for talking about Red Ted a little bit uh, and Lambeth a little bit is because the new Labour project which you were... Um, Associated with? No, which you helped initiate if indeed you did not initiate back in the mid 80s partially came out of a, a need to deal with the damage that had been done to Labour by, in your perception, by these people like Red Ted Knight. Yeah, that was the previous near-death experience before the one we've just experienced. Yes, the, the Jeremy Corbyn near-death experience. So um, the only reason for I wanted to kind of introduce the new Labour experience was that Labour has been here before. We have been here before. We did fight back, but it took us 18 long years to get back into government in 1997. And that was essentially what the first period of government that we were elected to in the last 50 years. Yeah. Um, just by way of illustration, I was 24 when Margaret Thatcher was elected. I was 42 by the next time a Labour government came into power. And it's important for people to understand what that means, I think. Yes, particularly given our present yeah. predicament. Because now the Conservatives have been in power for, in one way or another, for 11 years. Yep. Uh, and so on. and so, people think they're going to be re-elected at the next election. So, first... And we have to disabuse them of that idea. Yeah. Let's, well, let's disabuse them at the end. What I'm interested in, really, is that's a kind of long view of politics. You took Labour Party, helped take the Labour Party to a position of electability. It was elected three times and so on. You were in government. So you weren't just having ideas about stuff. You then had to do things. Um, in 2001, began a series of what you might call cataclysms, which have continued to this day. Maybe say we could say four of them. So let's go to the first one first. There's New Labour doing New labour kind of things. And then 9-11 happens almost exactly 20 years ago. Can you tell me what effect that had on what you thought you were doing? I think it had two effects. One, it wrenched the Prime Minister, Tony Blair, away from his domestic agenda, which was focused on the reform and overhaul and new delivery of public services, wholesale reform of education, of schools, the opening up of the university uh, sector, 
the reform and overhaul of healthcare uh, delivery, all he was doing on uh, with the uh, neighbourhood crime and the respect uh, uh, agenda, it wrenched him away from a domestic agenda and put him very firmly front of uh, stage in what subsequently uh, became known as the war on terrorism. Um, and the second effect it had was that it brought home to you the extent to which your welfare, your safety, your security, and an awful lot of the things that you take for granted in your life is dependent on effective state action. I would say 9-11 uh, in the whole security and policing and intelligence sphere uh, was the first of a succession of events that reminded us that we need the state, we need an effective and smart state, not just a big state, and that it had to be managed and reformed well in order to serve the needs of uh, 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 the, 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 the people who put us there. Because the global financial crisis did the same. Well, and the we'll pandemic's just done the same. Well, we'll come on to those in a moment. And now climate change is going to do the same for us as well. Oh, to come on to it now if you like. You know, no, 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 no. You're in the driving seat here, not me. Yes, yeah. Uh, so. I'm just making a point that, I mean, for the first 75 years of the last century, we saw it as a relentless growth of the state. And then with Mrs. Thatcher's uh, arrival, because a lot of people in the country started questioning whether we needed such a big state, whether we were getting value for money from that state, whether it's the services for which it was responsible uh, were really delivering and meeting uh, our needs and people also got slightly fed up with the cost uh, of an ever-growing state. And I think that what's happened in politics fundamentally is that we are seeing a return of uh, the state. But in my view, and I feel this very passionately, uh, the Labour Party hasn't simply got to be a cheerleader for a bigger state. That is not the way to electoral success, in my view. Uh, we have got to produce ideas uh, for a different, better, smarter uh, delivery of services and the meeting of needs by the state. Otherwise, you know, people, and also to maintain a grip and a disciplined state hold over the public finances that fund that state, or we are going to face the same near-death experience uh, 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 now that we experienced uh, after the 1970s. OK, and I want to take you right back to where we were um, uh, before that interesting peroration. Because the thing, because you've stated, in a sense, what we need to do, blah, blah, blah. But what 2001 shows, and this is why we've kind of pushed it in there, is circumstances i mean what's the famous phrase events yeah events. if you want to make god laugh tell him your plans uh, and so on is the old uh, is the old expression events huge events yep. completely act to disrupt your capacity to do things and that's as if the, and that's without the fact that actually doing them was difficult enough in the first place <laughs> saying stuff easy doing stuff very difficult you were in government and you were doing that so 2001 wrenches your prime minister away it gives you Iraq. Unfortunately, yes. Yeah, which makes, which makes them very, unpop uh, very unpopular, um, but not popular enough to put the Tories then. And then as if that's not enough, towards the end of, uh, of, of Labour's uh, period in power, you again get the crash. Now, how does that impact upon Labour? Well, it, it impacts us uh, in two ways. It to continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.